never find a place to spend the night. No street lights, I can hardly see a thing. And you're about the most obnoxious little brat I ever met in my life. What's your name? Mark. Mark Gordon. This part of the world sure hasn't changed much. No, changed from what? From what it was like when I was a kid. I thought you were from Oakland. What do you know about Oklahoma? Well, I spent some time out here when I was a kid on my grandpa's ranch. Boy, I tell you, it's hardly changed at all. Oh, great. Just terrific. <laughs> since I've known you. Uh, it goes with the territory. I don't suppose you could just sort of, you know, lay a little power on it, save some time and effort. Mark, I'm an angel. I'm not the auto club. Terrific. Could you lend a wing? <laughs> It'd be my pleasure. We had better find a place to spend the night. No street lights, I can hardly see a thing. Well, there should be a little town up here somewhere. Yeah, Twin Rivers. It was the closest place to my grandpa's ranch. Hey, while we're in the neighborhood, you want to stop in, see some old friends or something? No. Grandpa died when I was a kid. There's nobody left around here. Hey, it might be fun for you to stop by the old ranch. I doubt if there's anything left. Probably subdivided into condos or something like that. I think that's what really killed them, you know? Losing the place even back then. He wanted something to hand down to his grandkids, you know, to me. He didn't make it. I don't think I'd have made much of a farmer anyhow. Oh, he wanted something to hand down. It was during World War II. See, my dad was in the Army. My mom took sick. Sent me out here to spend some time with my grandpa. Boy, I haven't thought about him a long time. Sounds like you two are pretty close. Uh, not really, not back then. You know, I think he died not really knowing how much he meant to me. One hell of an old man. Run off the road, 
He's hurt pretty bad. We gotta get him to the hospital. The hospital's nearly 50 miles away. We got a doctor at Twin Rivers. I give you a hand. Thank you. Why don't you two wait in the front room? There's hardly enough space in here for me. All right, Doc. What happened, Thurman? Oh, uh, this fellow and his friend were in a car accident. Uh, Doc's in taking a look at the other fellow now. I'll put some coffee on. Oh, don't go to any bother. Oh, no bother. None for me, Flora. I gotta get back to the house. Well, this young man looks like he could use some. I gotta be going. Uh, good luck to you and your friend. Oh, I can't thank you enough. For what? Well, for stopping on the road back there and bringing us here. Uh, lucky you aren't from around here, are you? No, I'm not. Well, around here, folks do for one another. Good luck. Thurman. Here's some biscuits left over from dinner. And if you weren't so stubborn, I'd eat them up for you. <laughs> thank you much. You take care. <laughs> You had anything to eat? Oh, I'm fine, really, thank you. Well, I'll get that coffee for you. Is it gonna be all right, Doc? Well, that's hard to tell. Nothing broken. He has a concussion. Head injuries are tricky. Could I see him? Oh, sure. He's liable to drift in and out of consciousness. They do that sometimes. That was in God's hands right now, not yours or mine. You better let me check you out, too. You look a little shaken up yourself. No, no, I'm all right. That won't be necessary. Yeah. I'll say what's necessary and what isn't. So or you'd be dead as a doornail, but uh, I couldn't hear anything. Yeah, well, you probably just have a bad connection. Why don't you try it again? Well, well, I'll be darned. I do hear it now. It's the strongest heart I've ever heard in my life. Ah, you seem fit. You're welcome to sleep on the couch if you like. We won't know anything about your friend for quite a while. Well, I'd just as soon stay here with him if it's all right with you. Well, suit yourself. I smell some coffee brewing if you'd like some. If you need me, just talk. Thank you, Doc.
And Dad. Mark. Mark. John. Hey, I'm right here, buddy. I smell breakfast. Welcome back. I tell you, it's the most remarkable thing I've ever seen in my life. Well, you mean how quick he recovered? No, I mean how much he ate for breakfast. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Doc, I can't thank you enough for what you did for him. Didn't do a thing. Beats me the way he recovered like he did. I'd take it easy, though, if I were you. Oh, I will. But is there a place around here we could rent a room? If you want to pay, there are a couple of rooming houses. And if you don't, there's a Sims place. They'll give you lodging in exchange for work. You still call it that? Call it what? The Sims place. Well, it's the only thing they've ever called it, as far as I can remember. So why don't we try that, John? I'd like to see the old place again. Sure, you got it. Hey, Doc, thanks a lot for what you did. It's OK. I'm glad everything worked out the way it did. Ma'am, thank you for that breakfast. It was a pleasure. You take care now. Remember, try not to overdo. I won't let him. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? It's still called the ranch, the Sims place. I mean, that was my granddad's name, or at least it used to be. Carl Fred Sims. In these small towns, the old timers probably just call a place what they always call them. Yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> Man, I cannot believe it. This place has not changed and I owed it since I was a kid. Not even a little bit. Look at these cars. Yeah, they're old, all right. I'm surprised people haven't sold them. You know, these cars are worth a lot of money nowadays. I bet they are. Listen to that. What? The music. Even it hasn't changed. It must be one of those oldies but goodies stations. Spooky. It'd be nice, but spooky. Well, come on, we got a long walk ahead of us. How does it look to you? Any different? Like I walked away from it five minutes ago. You know, it's been almost 40 years. I spent some time here. Uh, doing what? Fishing? No. Playing Oakland. <laughs> Used to tell my granddad I was going to school. I'd come down here, mope around all day, wishing I was back in Oakland. Boy, I tell you, I love this spot. Mm. Hey. Are you all right? Yeah, I just got a little dizzy there for a minute. You sure? Yeah, I'm fine. Hey, take a look. Looks like somebody stole your spot. Yeah, it looks like. Hiya. What do you want? I'm not supposed to talk to hobos. What? You look like bums. You're a real sweetheart here. Hey, kid, you know, I used to hang around here. I used to play hooky here. I ain't playing hooky. Nobody said you were. No, we're just looking for work. We heard there was some at the Sims place. Yeah, well, if you go down there, you better not rat on me to my granddad about playing hooky. You better not, or I'll tell the sheriff you tried to hurt me. Nobody's going to rat on you. What's your grandpa's name, anyway? Are you stupid? You're about the most obnoxious little brat I ever met in my life, so how's that? So why are we stupid? Because you said you were looking for the Sims place. Why do you think they call it that? Because that's my granddad's name, Mr. Sims. What's your name? And what's it to you? So I don't have to call you Hey You. What's your name? Mark. Mark Gordon.
Jonathan, what's happening? That kid was me. I mean, he was me when I was nine years old. That's right. Same sweet disposition and all. But how can that be? Remember what you told me back in the car about how your grandfather died before you ever got to tell him how you felt about him? Yeah. You're getting a second chance, Mark. You're getting a chance in this life to get that little boy who was you to tell his grandfather how much he really loved him. You knew all along? No. No, I didn't know until I met the boy. Then I knew. What is this, a dream? Does it feel like a dream? No. Then it isn't. What can I do for you? Granddad. What? Oh, nothing. You just uh, remind me of my granddad is all. Oh, I do, do I? Yes, sir. Well, from the way you sound like you're trying to soft soap me, I figure you're out here looking for a handout. If that's the case, you're barking up the wrong tree. Now get off my land before I get the law on you. Judas Priest. First two bums, and now another. Only this one wears his Sunday school suit. Well, now I know where you got your disposition from. Well, there, Carl Fred. Hello, Mrs. Stone. What brings you out here today? You plan to give me a hand with the chores? Eh? <laughs> no, no. Actually, I'm afraid I have some unpleasant news for you. Never knew you to bring any other kind. The bank has refused to make you another loan. Why? Well, you know why. Your well's dried up. You don't stand a chance of farming without water. That's why I need the loan, to dig a well. Well, there's no guarantee you'd find water. I'm sorry. You make a payment in 48 hours, or we take possession. Land isn't nothing to you but dollars and cents, is it? Farming's a business, Carl Fred, and if you can't cut it, then you lose. Oh. By the way, my daughter and son-in-law are looking for a place. Now, you sell this place to me before the bank takes possession, and you'll make yourself a thousand dollars. thousand dollars? This land has been in my family over a hundred years. Well, it's more than you'll get two days from now, which is nothing. Besides, you've got that grandson of yours to think of. How are you going to take care of him after you lose this place? I'll give you till noon tomorrow to think about it. Good day to you, Carl Fred. You buzzards hanging around here for? I thought I told you to hit the road. Look, Mr. Sims, we're not looking for a handout. We were hoping to find some work here. You deaf? You heard me talking to that loan shark? I can't pay no wages. Well, we weren't asking for any. Room and board would be enough. I mean, you have to dig a well. We could help. Yeah, it shows what you know. I dug ten dry wells in the last six months on this property. Came up empty. How are we going to find the right spot and then dig a hole by hand in 48 hours? Well, I'll tell you, I've done my share of divining. It's hogwash. Maybe it is, Mr. Sims, but at least it's worth a try. It's a waste of time. Mr. Sims, you say this land's been in your family for a hundred years? Yeah, it sure has. What business is it of yours? 
Well, I mean, you must have kin buried around here. Wife, maybe, parents, grandparents. Doesn't seem right to give that up without a fight. You seem to know how folks feel about land. Well, like I said, you remind me of my grandpa. He had a spread a lot like this. They tried to take it away from him, too, but he fought for it. Did he win? <laughs> my granddad always said that winning was for prize fighters. Life wasn't a game. It was a journey. He ended up in the same place for everybody. What was important was family and what you did along the way. You said that, did he? Well, now, I don't know what we can get done in two days, but you're welcome to stay on. Come on, I'll show you where you can sleep. Mark? You can't tell him who you are. He's my granddad. I don't want to tell him I love him. He was your grandfather. He's that little boy's grandfather now. It's up to him to do the telling. Were this food which we are about to receive, O oh Lord, make us truly grateful. Amen. Amen. All right, dig in. Oh, it smells good. Mark. How was school today? Okay. There's something I want to talk to you about. I have a choice to make. You're part of it. I have to lay out our mortgage payment or lose the ranch. Now, if we can hit water in two days, which I reckon is near impossible, I'll make the payment. I don't know if I'm going to be able to make the one after that, but I'll make this one. Or I can sell out right now, make up a thousand bucks. What will happen to me if you sell this place? Where will we live? Take you back to Oakland, I reckon. Thousand bucks ought to see us through till your mortgage back on her feet. You mean I could go back to Oakland? Mark, you know I wanted to give this land to your uncle, but he got killed in Sicily. A little grave and a cross is the only land he got. I was kind of hoping to hang on to it long enough to give it to you. To me? I hate this place. I want to go home. This whole place is just a bunch of ignorant clodhopper Okies. They sent me here to punish me because my mom got sick. No, that's hogwash. No, it isn't. I hate this place. I hate it. Mark. That settles that. You only fight for something when it's worth fighting for. You fellas can help me start packing up tomorrow morning. How'd you know where I was? Well, like I said, I know an awful lot about you. Mark, listen to me. I know you blame yourself for your mother getting sick. You two had a fight, you got real mad at her. And you wish she was dead. Never said that to anybody, you know? You just wished for it, just thought about it in your head. Next day, she got sick and was taken to the hospital. I never told anyone that. I know. It's an awful load for a little boy to carry around. Especially when it's not true. It is true. I told Cotter she was dead. 
She got sickened. Mark, your mother didn't get sick because of anything you wished. I can tell you something else. She's gonna get better. And your dad's gonna come back from the war safe and sound. Are you sure? Yep. Tell me everything that's gonna happen. I can't. All I can tell you, everything's gonna be okay. I tell you, Mark, I tell you what's important. Right now. You know your grandpa loves you an awful lot. No, he doesn't. All he cares about is this dumb ranch. Mark. I mean, you, this land, his work, they're just they're all tied up together in his head. And that's the way it is with adults sometimes, you know? They work real hard so that they can have something to hand down to their grandkids. Because they love them so much. And they love the land so much. You know, you, you broke your granddad's heart tonight. Now, I know you didn't mean to, but you did. Oh, come on. It's like a rock. You don't feel bad because of anything I say. Why? Because he didn't cry. Put on his act. What act? Being strong. Well, you think that no matter what comes along, he can handle it, right? Not true. He gets scared, he gets afraid like everybody else. Just doesn't let on. My dad's never scared. <sighs> oh, yes, he is. Believe me, I know. Do you know what your granddad's most scared of? No. That the family will be forgotten. Your roots. You know, that old man in there, he's got stories he could tell you that just knock your ears off. How come you never told him? Because you never asked to hear him. That old man is a book, son. All grandparents are. They're like, like magic books that are filled up with who you are, where you come from, why your, your eyes are like Grandpa Jake's, why you got a temper just like your great grandpa Carl. And when those old people die, and books are lost forever. He needs you, Mark. He needs something right now that only one person in the whole world can give him. That's you. But I don't have anything. What could I give him? Your love. That's your love, Mark. Oh, Fred, I'm a busy man. Now, what's your answer? Grandiad! Tell me answers no, Grandiad. Mark, you're supposed to be in school. I was playing hooky. I saw him drive over the bridge. Tell me answers no. Now, see here, little boy. Children should be seen and not heard. Cute, real cute. Grandiad, we can bring in that wealth, the four of us. I know we can. Carl, Fred, if you turn down my offer now, you'll be throwing away a thousand dollars. This land's been in my granddad's family for a hundred years. You could take that old thousand dollars and go get stuffed. Tell him to get up our land, granddad. Somebody ought to teach this boy some manners. You're absolutely right, Mr. Stone. Mark, you've no right to be telling Mr. Stone what I should have the pleasure of telling him. Get off our land. Stone heart, stone head, get off our land. You'll regret this, Sims. Not as much as you'll regret losing your upper plate if I don't see your backside moving toward that empty car. You really told him, Granddad. We both told him, huh? <laughs> well, you ready for me to start divining? Where? Well, 
Start right here. I told you it was hogwash. Give me a minute. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Hogwash, eh? Huh? Eh? Oh, yeah! Look it! Look at it, Grandia! Time to start shoring. Set up the rig. Mark? Yeah. I was talking to my grandson. Hey, boy, will you toss down the canteen? Right, Granddad. There you go. Thanks. And check if Jonathan's got the lumber loaded, huh? Sure thing. You should take a break. You've been at it for hours. Don't you worry about me, young fella. I'm used to hard work. Feel that hand. Go ahead, feel it. You don't get hands like that crocheting toilets, huh? Yeah, sure don't, Granddad. Hey, don't you go making fun of me. Oh, it wasn't. I was... It's just you remind me so much of my own Granddad. Uh, you must have been a stubborn ass, huh? <laughs> Come on, let's get busy with these boards. Not asleep. You put in a heck of a day. Don't know. The body's tired, but the head's not. Just don't know if I'm doing the right thing. Oh, I know I. I got all worked up about it, but that's just stubborn me. You earned the right to be stubborn. I'm gonna miss that boy. What at that water? You wait and see. Even if we do, he isn't going to stay here. And I don't blame him. He doesn't have the same feelings as I do about the land. Or about me. Sure he does. Pitched in today, didn't he? I was proud of him. He reminded me of it. What is it? What's wrong? I don't know. Stop pushing, pushing. Orders to go west at once and investigate. No time to lose. What's wrong? It's your granddad. I'm going for the doctor. Granddad? Mark? 
The doctor's with your grandfather. You better come home now. No! I have to hit water. I have to! You better come now, son. No. No, no! my granddad. You better go in now. Be all right. We hit water. They can't take our land away now. Granddad? I can't hear you, Mark. I can't hear either one of us. Look at you. I thought I told you to wash up before you came in the house, huh? I hit water. Huh? They can't take our land away. <laughs> oh. oh, what I give to see the look on old Stone's face. <laughs> you will, Granddad. This old boy run his clock out. There, there, now. Don't cry. It's gonna be all right. I've had my time. It was good. Just think. I'm gonna go back to the big city now, huh? That's what you want, isn't it? Stay with you. I love you, Granddad. You do? I love you more than anything. But what do you know? I'll be done. I love you too, boy. I know. I know. <laughs>
John? Hey, I'm right here, buddy. I smell breakfast. Welcome back. You know, that's the most remarkable thing I've ever seen in my life. I mean, how quick he recovered. No, oh, how much he can eat. <laughs> oh, by the way, they brought your car back in this morning. Seems it didn't do much damage after all. Doc, I can't thank you enough for everything you've done. Didn't do a thing. Beats me the way you recovered like that. It's a miracle. Something like that. Bye, man. How you doing? You all right? A little weak. Otherwise, I'm fine. I'd like to take one last look at the old place, if you don't mind. Sure. Hey, Jonathan, stop the car. or somebody else. But you're supposed to be in school. What business is it of yours? None. None at all. <laughs> 